Hey there everyone, this is Bina007 back with another 10 minute movie review and today I'm going to discuss two films, Past Lives and A Fire. Past Lives is the astonishingly good debut feature from Korean-American director Celine Song. Celine Song actually is a playwright as well and you can see that facility with dialogue and structure and a really nuanced examination of relationships in her first feature film. But this isn't just a film that is about three people talking, (laughs) although it is. It's also beautifully filmed, beautifully edited, and I think is one of the most impressive debuts I've seen in a long while. The movie is essentially a three-hander between Greta Lee as Nora, Tio Yu as Hei Sung, and John Magaro as Arthur. Nora and Hei Sung were childhood sweethearts in Korea, and they're just on the verge of exploring a really sweet prepubescent romance, including a very sweet chaperoned date to a park, when Nora's family move her and them to Canada. And this obviously puts a divide between our couple. We then move forward 12 years and Hei Sung is on the verge of doing his compulsory military service in Korea. He's also studying engineering and Nora has moved once again to America and she's just about to enter a writer's retreat in Montauk. They rediscover each other on social media, a process that is stymied by the fact that Nora has changed her name from her original Korean name when she went to Canada. And they strike up a lovely friendship that becomes maybe a whimsical romance, but then maybe becomes a little bit frightening because they realize that if they're actually going to pursue this in real life and meet, then it's going to involve compromise. They are on other sides of the world. They have their own busy lives and careers and they're, you know, setting forth their lives in their mid-twenties. So Nora pulls back and withdraws. I suspect Tae Sung might have done the same if given the chance. And we fast forward again, 12 years. In that time, Nora has met a fellow writer, Arthur, and, and they have married and they seem really happy. It's, it's a really sweet, loving, supportive relationship. And some of the best scenes in this film are them just talking to each other about their feelings. It's interesting that there is a cultural divide for them to cross. Arthur expresses that he feels he can't quite follow Nora into the depths of her subconscious that she actually sleep talks in Korean and he starts learning Korean maybe to understand that more. It's it's an interesting take on what cultural identification truly means because Nora herself says that she feels very Korean American and when she finally meets up with Hei Sung that she notices how Korean he is, how their attitudes are different towards gender, towards career, towards life. So that is the big denouement in the final of the three stages. Hei Sung finally takes a holiday to New York and he meets up with Nora. And at first it's incredibly awkward. Um, They obviously have a deep historic connection to each other. But how far is Hei Sung really in love with Nora today? How far does he even know her today? He knows a Korean little girl. And even for Nora, how far is she truly attracted to his son or really to a kind of nostalgia to Seoul and to her childhood? Then you have Arthur, who is kind of third wheeling and feels very locked out of the conversation, not just because of their reminiscence, but because at times they divert to speaking in Korean. And it's really testament to his patience and to his love for Nora that he can let her explore what this relationship, this past relationship means to her in the security that she will come back to him. I find this film by Celine Song to be delicate, quiet, elegant, wistful. It's It's got such understanding and empathy with how relationships don't just wrap up neatly and allow you to move forward to the next one. And especially for those of us who are immigrants, that there is always a pull and a feeling of alienation between your current culture and your home culture. 
And this plays out if you're in an interracial marriage. Um, that doesn't mean it can't be, but that doesn't mean that it isn't a wonderful marriage, so long as there's great understanding and empathy on both sides. And I think this film really is a wonderful example of how truly successful relationships can work. For me, the three leads in this film are all incredibly strong, uh, particularly John Magaro, actually, in the smaller role, but one that has to do almost more of the heavy lifting in terms of navigating the cross-cultural divide. Um, I loved Celine Song's taut spare script. Um, the cinematographer, Shabier Kirchner, has this amazing washed-out palette. The framing is beautiful. But really, this is Celine Song's film. It's based on a real-life thing that happened to her where she was sitting with her current partner, but talking to a relationship or a lover from her past. And it's an amazing debut feature. It's so assured. I can see why it wowed audiences at the Berlin Film Festival and at Sundance earlier this year. And I'd really implore you to see it. Past Lives is rated PG-13. It has a running time of 105 minutes. It was released in the USA in June and will be released in the UK on September the 8th. So please do try and find it in an independent art house cinema of your choice. Ah me, well the next film to discuss is A Fire and I have to say that this is just not as successful as Past Lives. It's directed by Christian Petzold. Um, it's the second in his Elemental series. Some of you may have seen Undine, his film set in and around water. This film is called A Fire. And throughout its running time, there is the threat of wildfires kind of in our peripheral vision. And after a summer in Europe that has been incredibly impacted by wildfires, I think that is a very resonant motif about the dangers of climate change that we can't quite take seriously enough because we're so mired in the day to day of our selfish concerns. And when I started watching this film, I thought, oh, OK, so this is an environmental satire. Um, but then I was like, OK, maybe it's a satire on the narcissism of creatives who underestimate the intellectual character of people around them. I just really couldn't put my finger on what this film was meant to be. I think it's been labelled as a dark comedy. Um, it has aspects of being a sort of very deep character study, a relationship study. Oh, I don't know. I just found it to be very slow, very dull. I didn't sympathise with any of the characters. There were some plot twists towards the end. I did not find them compelling. And my mind drifted. Um, but anyway, to give you a small description... The film centres on Leon, played by Thomas Schubert. He is this schlubby, very self-important author, and he's struggling with his second book. He goes to a seaside house that is owned by his friend Felix's mum, and it's just a chapter of accidents. The car breaks down on the way there. When they arrive, they realise the mum has also let the house to a lady called Nadia, called, played by Paula Beer. Uh, Leon actually really fancies Nadia, but has to put up with hearing her shag her boyfriend very loudly in the bedroom next door every night. Um, and he really dismisses her intellectually, which we will find out is the wrong choice. We also see a visit from Leon's publisher who comes to tell him that his his second book called Club Sandwich is really dire. And as we hear it read aloud, in maybe the only truly funny scene of the film, we realise that that is in fact true. I think that we're meant to take this as a dark comedy. Maybe it's a satire on creatives and climate change. As I said before, I think this is not well enough written. It's maybe over long and I really felt for Paula Beer, who I think is a tremendous actress playing Nadia, because I really feel her character is shortchanged in this film. I feel that she is treated as a plot device to show up Leon's vacuity and to maybe give him some self-awareness and something of a redemption arc. But it's it's very poor. And yeah, I'm really disappointed. I normally rather like Christian Petzold's films, and this was not a good one. That said, um, Fire played the Berlin Film Festival earlier this year and won the Silver Bear. So maybe this is a minority view and maybe you want to check it out. If so, A Fire has a running time of 102 minutes. It is rated 12A. It was released in the USA last month and in the UK last Friday. So you can watch it in selected cinemas and also stream it at home. 
So two enthusiastic thumbs up for past lives. Very disappointed by a fire, but whatever you watch, I hope you enjoy it. And a reminder that you can find full written reviews at bina007.com. Thank you for listening.